Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Another quick video today is going to be on alcohol and drugs. Um, as you're watching this video, if you guys have any experiences um, with having to deal with any of the things we talk about in this video, uh, share your story if you feel comfortable. Uh, it may help some of some other people who have unfortunately uh, suffered with this. You know, obviously we don't want this to happen. Um, but if someone is going through this and they've had a bit of uh, a, a bad decision or bad luck, they may want to know how they can navigate that. Um, again, uh, don't want to do this. Uh, that's very bad piloting, but uh, if you have that experience, let's hear about it below. Um, so the general rule for alcohol is um, you call it eight hours bottle to throttle, um, but that's not the whole entire requirement. So. Uh, you must not consume alcohol um, eight hours prior to flying as PIC and then you must not have higher than 0 0.04 BAC which is a blood alcohol content and then finally you must not be showing any effects of the alcohol. So they throw this in there because you may pass this and you may pass it. They may not have no proof of this, but if you got in an accident or something and you are showing some, some odd effects, they may get you on that. Uh, so that's, it can kind of get uh, law wise uh, really tricky. Um, so I'm curious if anyone has any, any stories about this. Um, Luckily, I, I never have because uh, I've been smart about it, but uh, that's the thing. These are the requirements for alcohol. Now for drugs, it's, all, it's the same thing. Uh, you can't be experiencing any effects and you can't have it in your system. You may be subject to uh, drug tests, um, but it gets a little bit murky because there are a lot of prescription drugs out there these days and uh, a lot are accepted by the FAA. Now, how do you know what's accepted? Uh, for Drugs, you want to ask, ask your AME. What is an AME? It's your aviation medical examiner. So if you don't remember one, you can look it up. Just uh, Google find AME, find pilot AME, and there's a FAA website that'll help you find one near you. You can give them a call. You can say, hey, I'm not sure if I can take this drug or not, or fly with this drug. Uh, they should have a list. AOPA also has a good list. Um, but your AME is going to be your best friend on that. Uh, you don't want to take any chances. Uh, and also you're going to want to tell them what other medications you're taking because sometimes medications can mix and cause a bad reaction. Uh, so your AME is going to be your friend, a medical professional who also is versed in pilot stuff. So, okay. Now, one of the questions that I got asked on my oral exam, uh, was, uh, what happens if they said, okay, you know, a couple days ago you uh, had a few drinks and you went out and you got uh, a ticket or arrested for uh, driving under the influence and this is for any motor vehicle it could be a boat or whatever and so what happens if you know you not flying but driving or uh, driving a boat and you get cited for uh, driving under the influence so what happens the FAA requires that within 60 days you have to notify the FAA Civil Security Division. Okay, so if you get convicted, and that's 60 days after conviction, so if you get convicted of driving under the influence for alcohol or drugs, you have to notify the FAA Civil Security Division within 60 days. And then to go one step further, let's say you're not just uh, a, a drug a drug user or an alcoholic and uh, you're not in that type of trouble but you're even in further trouble and you're selling drugs or you're making drugs you're ma helping manufacture drugs uh, maybe you know there are people out there who use private pilot license to transport drugs across borders and stuff uh, just know that you are subject to um, to losing your license so lose your license or have it uh, suspended, okay? So if you have anything to do with buying, selling, 
making drugs or using them in any way with your aircraft, uh, just know you're going to probably lose your license. Okay, so don't do this stuff. All right. But um, I know you guys aren't going to do this, but uh, you might get asked on your examiner. So it's important that we know the details um, so that you're ready for your oral test uh, and you have these details. All right. Thanks for watching.